for cut content for Mr. Any News, Season 2, Episode 14, What the Enemy Didn't Show from Amelia's Past. Let's go. The small hints towards Amelia's past were definitely a big part of this episode. And while there were a few important Rosenblatt. details that didn't make it into the anime, it actually wasn't the most significant change made. No, the most significant change actually comes from the previous episode. Hmm? An emotional encounter between Amelia and Subaru that Oh, yeah, that never happened, but instead Oto just kind of like helped him out. ...went to change Subaru's very way of thinking. It also ties deeply into a lot of the events that happened this episode. So, let's take a look at this and more as we continue our ReZero Cut content series. But first... But first, this video is sponsored by Surfshark. How did I know? Of course I... How, do you, how much do you think I've farmed this guy, bro? Before we even get to the part with Otto and Subaru, Subaru had first come from a conversation with Amelia. A fairly significant and emotional scene that I initially thought was going to be included this episode. But because but it, wasn't. it wasn't, it's likely it won't be included at all. So this has to be talked about first before anything else. Was it another lap pillow? It takes place right before Subaru was running through the forest. After having learned about Roswell's plans, he was simply walking around Sanctuary trying to figure out what to do. It was as he did that Amelia appeared somewhere along the path, calling out to him to see what was troubling him. Just from the look on his face, she immediately knew that something was bothering him. So she offered to listen to anything Subaru wanted to say. At first, he was reluctant to share what that was. So rather than talk about it, he instead redirected the conversation towards Amelia, changing the topic to the one thing that he shouldn't have, her trial. <laughs> Unlike yeah, Subaru, trauma. though, Amelia was very open towards how she felt about it. She talked all about how she just wanted to run away from it. A feeling that Subaru couldn't help but resonate with. Don't give up! Because of this, Subaru immediately told Amelia that it was okay to think that way. He didn't even let her finish talking before he started trying to half-heartedly justify the benefits of it. Okay. Words just kept coming out as Amelia became more and more perplexed by Subaru's sudden odd behavior. The hell? Is he trying to convince her not to go through the tribulations? Like, Rem wouldn't do this shit. Rem would be like, don't give up. But Subaru is saying... Shit, let me take the trial for you. It got to the point that Subaru wasn't even sure what he was trying to say anymore. What are you saying, bro? What may have started out as him trying to be consoling was now nothing more than Subaru just- And does this scene have any significance now, now that we know that Subaru could potentially- He is a sage candidate. That's Flugel's tree that he busted. With the whale that got crushed by it. With someone that resembles Satala. What does this image tell us? That we have become the new sage? Is this significance? When- th and, 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 and then the, the sage candidate shit also confuses me. Is this a title that's publicly known? I don't know, are you born a sage? You're not born a sage. You, is it the accomplishments that you've made that you become a sage? Do people's- Like the people in Lugunica right now, the big important decision maker, see Subaru as a sage candidate. Because the witches mention it. And I don't know why they would, other than him obviously having this forbidden knowledge through these different regressions and being able to solve these problems. But I wonder if it's like a public title that will be recognized when Subaru returns to the kingdom after Arc 4. Will he be crowned a sage candidate? Will the wise men of the council, like Miklotov, ever acknowledge? I don't know. Started out as him trying to be consoling was now nothing more than Subaru just deflecting his own problems. He began to talk about how everyone else was so self-centered. All they ever like you did was order him around or expect him to do things their way. Yeah, But Echidna. never once did they Roswell. ever take the time to consider that maybe he was trying to do things his way. So as he talked all about how he'd just been being manipulated this entire time, his emotions continued to rise and his head became dizzy. He would have been lost in a senseless rage had Amelia not stepped in to calm him down. She brought his head close to her chest and told him to take things slower, placing it right by her heart so that he could be calmed by the melodic sound of its beating. <laughs> Amelia it was heartbeat. such a surprising gesture that Subaru couldn't even tell what was happening. Only after a few seconds did he finally realize that he was being hugged by her, creating a moment very similar to the one in the mansion. Of course, Subaru we had a second lap pillow, not really. We had a heart pillow that got skipped over, and instead we had Otto instead. Wonder why. Subaru became all flustered by it. But to Amelia, this was just her helping him in the only way that she knew how to. 
So it was in this moment of vulnerability that Subaru began to pour out everything. He began to talk all about how he just wanted to help her. How he just wanted to make things a little bit easier and give her a bit more comfort. But even after trying so many times, he still had absolutely nothing to show for it. After hearing Subaru's intent, Amelia responded in a way that he never would have expected. I love you. She was happy he felt this way but no? refused to accept it. Yes, she did appreciate what he's been doing, but she refused to allow him to search for an easy way out for her. There you go! Finding a loophole past the trials just wasn't something she could accept. Despite them being a mission that someone else forced onto her, she had still made it her own personal goal to beat them. That's good! And thank god that Puck has now returned the memories after breaking the contract so she can clear it by herself. Way better this than us literally just trampling over her will and making her like a puppet queen by solving all her problems for her. That doesn't make sense. Like we shouldn't be have to, we shouldn't have to make her take the easy way out or for us to solve her problems. We, it needs to be like a teamwork. Amelia needs to be self-sufficient and competent by herself. So it was here that Amelia completely and wholeheartedly rejected Subaru's resolve. She wasn't going to allow him or anyone else make excuses for her. To Subaru, this was Amelia putting on a display of unshakable determination. Good. It went to showcase just how commanding her will could be. I mean, this was no longer the weak girl he'd been seeing the past few loops. No. Instead, this was the Amelia whose resolve was currently at its peak. Damn, he cut out such important things to kind of like show that Amelia has changed from core 1 of season 2 and is now... She hasn't gotten the memories back, but at least the resolve is there to actually like do something. Wonder why they did this for Amelia. It's just cutting out important Subaru Amelia bonding moments and like the first steps of her seemingly trying to accomplish a trial now. An Amelia who Subaru never once thought to believe in. As Subaru was at a loss for words, Amelia went on to ask one last question. She wanted to know why he was trying so hard to help her. <laughs> it's just down bad for you. I mean, didn't you remember season 1 finale about the I love you part? Wait, do you th She just really doesn't care. No, it's not that she doesn't care. She's confused? I thought the season 1 finale made it very clear that she wants to help her no matter what and wants to be by her side. Why are you trying to help me? Because aside from you not clearing and us getting fucked up because of it, like, does it not make sense? To which the answer was the same as it's always been. But why so, do you love? Why? It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how Subaru answer is just, I love you. Who else has constantly just told us, I love you and I love you, and we were confused on why they're acting like Satala does the same shit, or should I say the Witch of Envy in that moment? I don't know. Like, Subaru has no other answers than just an I love you. <laughs> Amelia's confused, like, what the fuck? And, and Satelo or Witch of Envy also does the same shit, I love you, I love you. And Subaru's like, what the fuck? You know, there's, there's a lot of shit like this. Since this was the answer she expected, Amelia already knew what to say in response. It was because Subaru loved her that she was completely fine with him just supporting her. There was no need for him to go so far because all she ever wanted was for him to just stay by her side. Okay. All she needed was for him to be there to push her forward. Though she might stumble and fall, that failure was part of the reason why he was needed. So long as he was there to watch her as she tried her best, then that was all that Amelia could ever want from him. And that's exactly what she was telling him right now. So when confronted by such a strong conviction to do this herself, Subaru was now overcome by an immense feeling of shame. He was only now realizing how truly prideful and conceited he'd been. And that's because he finally understood that he was the one who doubted Amelia the most. Yeah, for rightful reasons in my opinion. Was it prideful and conceited to assume this after what, what we've seen from Amelia all throughout season, one, season 2 part 1? I don't think that's unreasonable. I think that's the only objective conclusion one could have after seeing her fail over and over and over and over again. Despite being the person she needed the most to have believe in her, he was actually the single person who believed in her the least. I don't blame him, have we? Are we not watching the same fucking anime? Like, is, would anyone believe her? Now I will, because Puck broke the contract and the memories are back and that's gonna help her get through the trials. But until this point, nobody has faith. How could you have faith? 
After seeing her fail over and over again, there's nothing that could change. Not once did he ever try to place faith in Amelia's resolve, determination, or strength. Once that fact really sunk in, it made Subaru begin to run out of a feeling of pure and insufferable shame. It's why we saw him frame- Like, am I unreasonable for thinking this way? Insufferable shame? Pride and conceit? I think this is objective analysis based on a pattern of behavior that we've seen over and over and over again. Antically running through the forest at the end of episode 38. Which leads us now to the beginning Oro. of episode 39. Straight Bet. Covering chapters 2 to 4 of volume 13 of the light novel. We start things off with Otto's confrontation with Subaru. A faithful scene in which Otto made it painful they fought. that Subaru's lack of intellect and strength wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for what he wanted to do or who he wanted to be. We saw that this was a point Otto literally had to beat into Subaru in order to finally get him to talk. Wait, did we just acknowledge? Did we just like witness Otto overpowering us and outsmarting us? Kind of, right? We know that Subaru is relatively strong. I know that the whole point of this was to kind of like show that He's so panicked that he doesn't even have his footing and we tripped him and that's supposed to be like an analogy to that. But Otto is pretty physically talented too, now that I really think about it. But what they didn't show was what they talked about. It's a cut scene that's briefly mentioned in the ReZero break time show. We saw it. But to sum it up, Subaru pretty much told Otto everything he could. The only things he omitted were the details on Return by Death and the Witch's Tea Party. So everything from the mansion to Roswell's plans and intentions were now common knowledge. Okay. Despite that painting a picture where Subaru had no chance of winning, Otto still accepted Subaru's story for what it was, following it up by saying that he was going to ignore the odds. So, for the first time in his life, Otto was willing to join the losing side, a decision that went against every part of him that was a merchant. For a friend! Now, when Subaru went to go make his bet with Roswell, he actually interrupted him as Ram was changing his bandages. <laughs> so, both had put on an expression of surprise that Subaru never expected to see. I would have loved to see that. See from them. Given that this was such an abrupt occurrence, Ram immediately intervened to get Subaru to leave. Okay. She refused to allow him to talk to Roswell. This made Subaru think that something like last time might happen. So, just in case it did, Subaru simply put his palm in her face and completely ignored her, proceeding <laughs> to tilt his head towards Roswell and make a proposal. <laughs> he just went like, what the hell? That would have been such a funny scene. He asked if Roswell had the guts to push himself for the sake of his successor. A very specific set of wording that refers Subaru. to return by death without actually talking about it. It was meant to convey his intent to Roswell without revealing anything to Ram. And it actually worked to get him to listen. So Roswell ordered Ram to leave so the two could talk in private. At first, they discussed Subaru's sudden change in attitude. I mean, it was only last night that he was begging for forgiveness. Yeah, it was a couple hours later. We just show up. Just Rosal must think that we're bipolar, because <laughs> this is the same. It's not. It is the same day, because this happened probably at like I don't know three, four in the morning. That we came back at like ten a.m. I'm just making some random guesses and time range. Dude, Ros Roswell was shocked. He's like, "What the hell? I didn't think that you come back in this loop and try to fix it. I thought it was over. What the hell happened to you?" But now he was confidently trying to make a bargain. When Subaru said that it was because of a friend. Roswell immediately shook his head in despair. Hmm. He found Subaru's reliance on others to be soft and weak. It's the exact opposite of what he wants us to be. To brutally use our powers, to mercilessly sacrifice everything around it, and as long as the ends justifies the means, that's all that matters. But to us, we can't be doing that. No, 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 no. We need to not rely on this power. Of course, if we die, there's nothing we can do about it. But to rely on it and constantly think about just dying to get out of these situations, no way. We need to actually try and just win without relying on regression, by relying on other friends. And by doing that, it is the exact antithesis of what Roswell wants, but I think that's the direction the story should go with Subaru forging his own path. He believed it was a naive mindset to think the suffering of the world could be solved with the help of others. To him, this was something that could only be done alone. So, it was this conflict of ideals that made Subaru want to make this bet. Power of friendship versus power of doing it alone. It's not like what they both wanted were very different. It's just that the approach they were taking to get it mm -hmm. were completely opposite to each other. And compromise wasn't something either found to be possible. 
So that brings us now to the purpose of the bet. What Subaru intended to do was prove Roswell's approach to be wrong by beating his plans with the cooperation of others. That's right. If I do prove to you that I can save the mansion and the sanctuary in this run, then you will abandon the book and just follow me. If he wasn't able to do it, then he would no longer try to stray from the path that Roswell wanted for him. That said, there was a limit to the amount of trust Roswell was willing to place in this bet. He was well aware that Subaru could just not follow through with it. So when he asked Subaru what's to stop him from going back on his word, Subaru responded back in a very earnest manner asking if he really thought he'd do that, all while never breaking eye contact with Roswell. It was a firm declaration of solidarity that Roswell couldn't help but abide by. Kind of a bluff, like the Garfield situation, just to see like, hey, I'm not fucking around here and, you know, you're gonna either take my word or not, and Roswell agreed. Leading to everything being laid out on the table and the bet being made. All right. Now, once that was done, we find out that Ram had been listening the entire time. What? Not by eavesdropping like in the traditional sense, clairvoyance. instead by using her clairvoyance. Okay. She had used this ability to synchronize her own vision with Roswell's, making it so- Synchronize with Roswell's? The hell? Yo, this clairvoyance utility is crazy. That it was as if she was in the room the entire time. Did Roswell know about that? I don't know how secretive this is. Since the rest of their conversation was pretty much as we saw, we can move on to when Otto appeared after to talk Best about disguise. Him. A conversation in which they talked a bit more about Garfield. The two had concluded that Garfield's cooperation was an absolute necessity. Yeah, so what were we gonna do? I, I feel like the, uh, the breaking the promise of Amelia by not staying there and for Amelia to then leave out of frustration or something, it's all planned, right? Then the villagers are gonna, are gonna try to seek for Amelia, there's utter chaos going in. Uh, then Garfield somehow gets lured to Ryuzu, Science Lab, and Otto is there. That's all part of the plans, right? Yes, he did prove to be a formidable roadblock in the past, but he was also the easiest person to bring to their side. Unlike Roswell, Garfield's views were neither conflicting nor unwavering. The only issue was Subaru's personal disdain towards him, a feeling of resentment that birthed from all the previous loops. I don't blame him. Garfield is fucking annoying. Like, him being the antagonist since, like, the part, uh, last core, it's just always been so frustrating and annoying. I understand why he's doing it, but it just feels so unnecessary. As soon as Otto heard that this was the problem, he immediately began to scold Subaru for allowing personal matters to get in the way of such a time-sensitive matter. To waste time thinking about such a sentiment was completely unproductive. Luckily, Otto was there to keep him focused on the main objective. That said, the key to gaining Garfield's help rested in the advice Echidna gave him. That was what he needed to focus on. As for the problems revolving around Amelia, Ram's recent advice made him realize that he needed to help her find what she was stumbling on. That was the only way he could help her get past the trials. Before we get to that though, we first have to go through his conversation with Ryuzu. A discussion in which Subaru Bilma. could have just used his authority to make happen quicker. But it's if wrong. If he was only focused on the results, then that's definitely something that he would have taken advantage of. But because he would have been cruel to see that timeline where he just, again, just mercilessly orders these lollies around, doesn't care about, you know, morals, ethics, anything. Those are fun for the if routes, I guess. Wasn't, this wasn't something he was comfortable with doing. If he used his authority and treated Ryuzu as just a mere doll, then Subaru felt it would end up damaging something important to him. Hmm. That's why he wanted to speak to Ryuzu the proper way. So, with his hand now rested on her shoulder, the first thing Subaru asked was how much she knew about Roswell's thinking, to which she could only say one thing. The book Roswell had was given to him by Echidna. Okay, Vehicle 2 then, right? Both of them were given by Echidna. I'm gonna assume Echidna then has the Tomb of Wisdom. She must have it. Who else would have it? Maybe the Sage. No. But... Roswell's book, we haven't seen the contents within, as in any sort of text, because he hasn't opened it in front of us. I know that it's probably not that important, but knowing that Biko's stuff started to run out a long time ago, and Betrigus, I know it's not the same shit, he has a gospel, but that shit also didn't have pages afterwards. What does that mean? As for the previous generations of Roswells. That's right. Roswell J. Mathers, the same Roswell, I'm assuming, that's been... <laughs> going down from one Roswell to another, each generation. Well, she had heard directly from them that the book had told them to take care of Sanctuary. All for the purpose of eventually greeting the Awaited One. The Awaited One. The Grimoire has told Roswell to protect the Sanctuary for the Awaited One. 
sounds just like Biko's awaited one. The one that she's waiting for Super- Wait, what? That was all that she knew about it. Subaru then asked if she knew the easiest way to liberate Sanctuary. Since he thought he was talking to Ryuzushima, he actually came prepared to convince her that it was for everyone's best interest that Sanctuary be freed. He made the point that it should be up to every individual on whether they wanted to stay or leave. Shima doesn't want to leave, A point that he was shocked to see Ryuzu actually agree with. So, that led to the clarification of there being multiple Ryuzus. That's right. Each destined to watch over Sanctuary and the original for all eternity. Now, Subaru wasn't going to try to interfere with their given job, but he did say that if any of the Ryuzus sought a life outside of what they currently knew, then he would certainly try his best to make that happen. He wanted to help them become something beyond that of a replica. They can all just be even more maids at her mansion, or just give them to Reinhard. This topic of conversation eventually made its way towards Garfield's past. The anime did mention how the trial he faced was the memory of his mother leaving. Yo, Garfield mom? Interesting. Frederica, Garfield mom, Ryuzu's there too. I'm assuming that is Shima before she got demoted and now has to wear white jackets? I'm not sure, but it's interesting. But it didn't quite continue on to explain exactly why he hated the outside world. You see, the reason for Garfield's resentment isn't so much because his mother and sister left him. It's more so because the outside world stole them from him. Stole them? So he doesn't blame mom or sister, he blames this entity known as the outside world. Is that cope? Even if he did want to go out there and find them, he still wouldn't be able to bring Ryuzu or anyone else with him. So that in itself forced Garfield to make a choice. Hmm. A choice in which the only two options were his family or the people of Sanctuary. For him to have to choose what was more important, well, that was something Ryuzu was sure Garfield anguished over every day. When we get to the next scene with him. Wonder what we can do with that knowledge. What is Otto gonna do now with Garfield there? confront him about the outside world and for him to offer a solution to not be fearful of the outside world to somehow be connected to Frederica and mother after clearing the sanctuary well we got more knowledge now now we need to somehow be able to convey that message to Garfield but I just feel like the fat cat is not gonna just stand down after one talk session I don't know what plan Otto has up his sleeve but I don't know we'll, we'll have to see about it Amelia she first apologized for being in such a sorry state. I mean, it was only last night that she had just asked Subaru to watch her do her best. So she wasn't exactly happy to have him see her be so weak. It did, however, present him with the opportunity to follow through with one of her requests. Since all she wanted was his support, that's exactly what he was here to give. <laughs> yeah, in the state of night, and he fucking left. <laughs> all planned, though. Leading to their conversation about Amelia's past. Now, what the anime didn't tell us was the exact number of years that Amelia was frozen for. Okay! We know that she was frozen when she was seven years old. Yeah, that doesn't and help us. We know that when she awoke, she went on to live with Puck in the forest for seven sure, years. Sure, sure, but... But the very crucial number that's missing is the 100 years that passed while she was frozen. Okay, 100! Okay! Okay! 100 years ago, she got frozen. So 107 years ago is roughly when she was... A baby she was born. So these are times after. Because I wanted to see if she existed for, uh, 400 years ago. I wanted to see. Did she exist in a time where Satala, Akin, all these different witches were actually alive 400 years ago? No. This is after the Great Calamity. A century of icy imprisonment during which her physical body continued to grow at a very slow rate. Much to the point that she couldn't even recognize it as her own when she awoke. What this means is that there's a significant discrepancy between Amelia's real age, apparent age, and mental age. <laughs> oh my god. Amelia had three separate ages. <laughs> None of which align with what they're supposed to be. Okay. But when you take everything into account, she was 107 years old after emerging from the ice. That's right. So that means her real age 114. is 114. But... Her knowledge of the outside world, social customs. She doesn't even know what love or date was. So she literally just a fucking baby, bro. Despite her physical appearance making her look like she's 18, in terms of her mental age, she's actually only 14. 
<laughs> uh, if, she, if Amelia was a lolly, the lolly cons would have been having a field day with this shit. 114, apparently it's 18, mental age 14, alright. <laughs> Rudius too, right? <laughs> Rudius real age, uh, 40 plus fucking, uh, I don't know how long he, he's fucking living in Mushoku Tensei world, let's just say it's 17, right? 57, apparent age, 17, fucking mental age, like 12 or some shit. <laughs> I love the term mental age. So, it really is a very perplexing way of looking at it. It is! Her elven blood had gone to disorient whatever vague concept of aging she already had. That said, it did explain a lot of Amelia's more peculiar- Sugoku! Anti- sorry, Mother Fortuna, right, says that shit. ...behavior. Specifically her ignorance of modern affairs or her use of phrases Language. that no one says anymore. Yep. It also made Subaru feel quite sorry for her. He couldn't help but feel bad for Amelia and the heavy burden she's been given. Especially now that he knew she was mentally only the same age as Felt. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Super the groomer. And the relationship is very interesting, huh? Because like, from the beginning, Subaru has been trying to force a date on her hand by trying to give a reward back. Making her owed some sort of debt over and over. But the grooming shit was only a meme in the finale when both are having such heartfelt discussions about how Subaru loves her and she doesn't know how to respond back and how you can take all the time you want, you know, I'll make sure you head, fall head over heels for me and... Now all of this arc is just basically Amelia being alone, puck gone, isolated, has no one to depend on. And they're definitely bonding because of this isolation, right? They're definitely going to bond, especially when Amelia overcomes the trials and Super is there. Like, they're going to deepen their relationship, but in a very artificial way? Artificial as in... The scenario where this dependency exists creates this weird situation where she can only be groomed? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to let this play out more and more. I'm, I'm not taking this shit seriously as an oh my god, cancel Subaru, he's grooming Amelia or anything. But the more that the show goes on, it does seem like he is molding her and... She is <laughs> gonna be a recipient of this love that might have been artificial. You know what I mean? It was a revelation in which the only thing Subaru could think of was why. As Amelia went on to talk about the settlement of elves she lived with, Subaru made the mistake of asking about her family. No, no, she's not mentally seven. She was mentally seven when Puck found her. By that time, her age has been grown up a bit. I think seven more years than passed, right? Or maybe I'm wrong about that. It's not like Roswell saved Amelia. No, no, no. Time has passed. I think she's mentally 14. Or is she supposed to be mentally 7? Let's get this shit cleared out. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're bringing a good point. You're bringing a good point. Let's look at this, right? Real age is 114 because she's actually lit. Like, 107 years ago, she was frozen, right? 107 years ago, she was frozen. She had seven years of growing up in the forest. Sorry, 100 years ago she was frozen. 107 is when she was born. Then she was frozen. Then she started to grow slightly during those 100 years. And after she came out, I'm assuming there's another seven years. Exactly. Puck saved her seven years ago, so this is 14. Seven years in the forest, then seven years outside the forest. This is how we come up with the number 14. And she looks 18 because she was slowly aging during that frozen moment. So that's the apparent age. The apparent age is how she is perceived to look 18. However, the mental age is actually 14 because she's only had seven years prior to frozen and after frozen. That, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, where are we? Modern affairs or her use of phrases that no one says anymore. It also made Subaru feel quite sorry for her. He couldn't help but feel bad for Amelia and the heavy burden she's been given. Especially now that he knew she was mentally only the same age as Felt. It was a revelation in which the only thing Subaru could think of was why. Ask Tape, bro. Fucked up guy making this poor elf girl to suffer. As Amelia went on to talk about the settlement of elves she lived with, 
Subaru made the mistake of asking about her family. I mean, it was only natural to be curious about her parents and or siblings. Yeah, but mom it and was dad, only after asking AFK. that he realized she only ever referred to Puck as her family. So, it was a question that led Amelia into the state of panic like how we saw in the anime. Now, just like how Amelia had done to him the night before, Subaru brought her head to his chest and told Heartbeat. her to be slower, using the beat of his heart to calm her down just as she wants to. Man, now that you have a complete, uh... Well, maybe the anime took it out so that people would see this as a repayment for the lap pillow. I don't know, it would have been nice to see that scene before Otto saved Subaru in, that lo in, in, in this loop. When she continued on to the part about Roswell, he actually didn't exactly say that he was the one who could help free the other elves. What he said was something more along the lines of, if she was to win the throne, then surely her wish to melt the forest's ice would be granted. You motherfucker. <laughs> this poor girl, bro. I don't even know if that's possible. That's so messed up. And, and Ross on the anime said, perhaps they can be thought. Like, if you come with me and you become the queen, you win the throne, perhaps we can melt them. It's just like... Now, let's think about this. Why is it so special? Why, 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 are, why are the frozen people just so unthawable? It must not be just ice. Because if it was just ice, if it was simply just melting and thawing it, Puck could do this. Puck is the fucking great spirit of like, I think, fire or heat. Basically, the concept of cold doesn't exist. You either take away heat or you add heat. We've seen Puck use ice spells. We've seen Puck use fire. Puck can manipulate the elements like that. The frozen people should be easily thought out if it's simple ice, but this is not simple ice. Something about this ice, it's different. It's like dry ice. I don't know. What the hell is happening here? There's something crazy going on. If she was to win the throne, then surely her wish to melt the forest's ice would be granted. So he didn't say exactly how that was going to be done or who was going to be doing it. Either way, both served to lure Amelia out of the forest. It was a plot in which Subaru knew Amelia wasn't even a main component of. And I bet Roswell's grimoire told him to go find Amelia in the forest like this? Her participation in the royal selection was- Jesus, Priscilla. It's very apparent <laughs> who has the superior cup sizes of all the fucking <laughs> royal selection girls. The royal selection was nothing more than a means to draw out someone more powerful. She was simply bait for the strongest Subaru. asset that was fated to appear beneath Subaru. Her, an asset that Roswell was hoping to take advantage of for mm -hmm. himself. The more Subaru thought about it, the more angry he became and the more he just wanted to break off all ties with Roswell. But he knew that that couldn't be done until everything was finished. So instead he just focused on Amelia. After she'd fallen asleep, Subaru was able to piece- Subaru doesn't know about- should we tell Amelia that your wish is impossible? Well, we don't know that. We're all fucking theorizing here. If we told Amelia, though, that, like, Roswell can't actually do that, like, what would she do then? Maybe she would think that the dragon could do it or some shit and ask the dragon for help. As long as there is hope, I think that Amelia would continue to run for the throne. Because, like, what else option is there? Right now, we, we must unfreeze all those elven people in the Elior Forest, so... Even if Subaru said, like, Roswell can't do that shit. He's capping. He's manipulating you. I bet that Amelia would still continue to get some sort of wish. Maybe from the dragon himself. Maybe the dragon's breath is something that can melt this special ice that Amelia made. Sleep. Subaru was able to piece together that the thing preventing her from completing the trials was the gap in her memories. It was the only thing that made sense as Echidna wasn't the type of witch to make her trials insurmountable. Sure, she did have a pretty twisted personality, but there was a certain method to her madness. So there had to be a way for Amelia to beat the trial. Yeah, I bet even Echidna probably wants to see those scenes where Amelia surpasses her a trauma and like shows a different path and new knowledge. She's greedy for content, so even for Amelia, I bet she'd be down for that? I don't know. Now, uh, what was I gonna say? I forgot. Beat the trial. Now, everything after this up until Amelia wakes up is pretty much the same. But it's when she does that we're actually given a closer look into her mental state. You know what's crazy here? 
The fact that Puck came out when we tried to choke Amelia, but right now, in all those loops, like when Puck said, I've been trying to break the contract, it's not as if he, all those different times through those loops has actually accounted for him taking time to break the contract. It means that all this time in each loop, we could have simply had Puck come out and break the contract, right? Puck says that he was trying to break the contract this all this time, but that's probably from whenever the season started and she, he went away in that room, right? Where Puck, you know, basically uh, gave his blessings to us and said, take care of her. This motherfucker, like, he was ready to come out and just break the entire time. Like, the memories is always there. Like, god damn. It's pretty much the same. But it's when she does that we're actually given a closer look into her mental state. Unlike in the anime, Puck didn't appear right away. At first, Amelia found herself overcome by an immense feeling of loneliness. Waking up to find that her right hand was empty made her realize Subaru. just how much comfort Subaru's hand had brought her when it was there. It was a sentiment she knew to be selfish yet couldn't help but yearn for. All she wanted was to have the warmth of his hand still be there. As she wondered if it was self-centered to think this way, thoughts of hypocrisy arose out of the memories of everything she'd said the night before. Remember, she had spoken all about how she could be strong all by herself. Mm, independence. Yet here she was now feeling relief knowing that Subaru had come to help her. Although she didn't want to accept it, the selfish hope to have Subaru save her like he always did still lingered in the back of her mind. I don't blame her, especially with such an insurmountable task in front of you to have that shit offloaded and your knight in shining armor to save you. Yeah, I, 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 I could fantasize about that shit too. That's normal. It was coming from the part of her that just wanted to run away. Now, when Puck did finally call out to her, Amelia was immediately confronted by an impossible decision. She was being made to choose between the warmth that had always been beside her or the frigid past that had been sealed away from her. There was no outcome where she could have both. So, as the short time she- I mean, shit! Here's the interesting thing. It's- it's not as- as- it's not as if Puck and Amelia had a contract all throughout Frozen Bond. They made that shit at the end, and Puck still came out to hang out. Puck was there with Amelia a lot. So now, why do you have to just disappear? You know what I mean? Like, this breaking of contract and Puck disappearing into the ethers makes it seem like he's gone forever. But motherfucker, you don't need a contract just to be with her. I've seen your ass in Frozen Bond and probably pre-Frozen Bond of you hanging out with her. So why is it now that you must go away? He had to make her choice slowly ticked away. She found that she was unable to move her hands towards Puck. She wasn't able to choose him over the voices that called to her from her past. The memories. As Puck's existence began to disperse, so too did Amelia's consciousness begin to fade. Eventually ending with her saying some words that could point to something Daddy. more significant. You liar. I'm not sure if this daddy is referring to actually Puck. Because sometimes, and we even heard that line multiple times. It wasn't me, it wasn't, whenever Amelia failed the trials and we woke up beside her. And she would say like, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it's not my fault. Puck, Puck, daddy, daddy. You would think that the dad refers to Puck. That's what we should be conditioned to think. But like, do you think it's possible? It's like a, it's actually Amelia's biological dad that she's referring to due to some other sort of memories that happened that we don't know about? I'm not sure. Bit more significant. In the next scene with Garfield, there's a bit more to be said about his relationship with Ryuzu. He treats both Shima and the other three founders as if they were his grandmother. He had convinced himself that that's what they were to him. That's fucked up because the Ryuzu Bilma, I think, says something memeing about how taking Ryuzu away from Garfield is like taking away his lover or something. So Garfield thinks it's grandma, but Ryuzu thinks that like lover relationship. What the hell? It didn't matter if they weren't actually related because to him what mattered the most was what was on the inside. To him that was what determined a person's true nature. Wow. It's for this reason that he could treat Shima and the others with such respect while still having absolutely no regard for any of the replicas. Because they're, <laughs> they're not the real ones. They're all just lolly suicide bombers with artificial... I mean, so is the other ones too, but they have more personality, I guess. It's also why he was so fond of Ram. What he saw in her was one of the most beautiful cores of all. <laughs> what, a girl that is just so vicious and cold and mean and will just be the sadist to your masochistic desires? Now, when Garfield had left Shima's house, 
he actually just so happened to bump into her. Oh. It was a rather unusual encounter since Ram wasn't normally ever out this late, especially not in these parts of the woods. As it turns out, she was only there because she had nothing better to do. She had passed off any duty she had to Subaru. <laughs> really? Since Garfield wasn't sure what to That's do, it? he decided to ask Ram if she had any regrets, to which she retorted by saying she regretted having to answer his question. Her real answer, though, was that she couldn't think of any. There was nothing specific that came to mind when she thought about it. So, this was one of the things that Garfield found to make her so charming. <laughs> there was, however, this feeling- Wait, 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 go back. ...by saying she regretted having to answer his question. Her real answer, though, was that she couldn't think of any. There was nothing specific that came to mind when she thought about it. So instead she shit on him and he liked it. So, this was one of the things that Garfield found to make her so charming. I think she's charming because she's very, like, rigid, strong, very harsh, just tells you the way it is. There's, there's something very authentic about that. I, I enjoy Ram because of that. Garfield seems to like... Garfield just wants to get dominated by Ram. There was, however, this feeling that something was missing. It wasn't enough to constitute a regret, but it did create this strange feeling of unease. So, not wanting to talk about it any further, Ramp simply ended the conversation and ordered Garfield to walk her back to the settlement. It was as he did that he briefly thought about Shima being left in the cabin, but he was certain that this quiet night in Sanctuary would continue. So, he simply disregarded it and continued on his way. A uh, part of the plan? Now, the last thing worth mentioning is Amelia's brief memory from the past. The woman who- Cameraman, bro. <laughs> Cameraman, a mother. Like, this is one of the first. No, it's not one of the first. We see Mother Fortuna's face, the, the back of it, at least, in Frozen Bonds. But, and, but like, that's crazy. Like, Jesus, Cameraman. Now, the that's last so thing aggressive. Worth mentioning is Amelia's brief memory from the <laughs> past. The woman who we saw said a bit more than what was shown. She was apologizing for not teaching Amelia any of the important things. Yeah, and something about the white lies and how people were trying to protect you all this time. What the hell is that all about? She was also apologizing for hiding everything from her. Hiding? All she wanted was for Prince her princess to be happy. Our princess. Now, these kind of terms, I wonder if it's just like a motherly figure telling a cute girl saying you're my princess or Amelia is like truly the princess of the elves or some shit I don't know so she had told a few white lies in order to well like let's assume that Amelia is a princess a princess of what well she's a half elf I don't know which one is human and which one is full elf there's also a chance that both mom and dad were half elves in which then you could still have a half elf offspring but could she be the byproduct of some sort of political marriage between elf and humans back in the past? And like, that's, I don't know. To get people not to hate her. It was a desperate plea that Amelia completely rejected. She hated the lies that brought nothing but sadness. So she couldn't accept what this woman was saying. Hmm. Anyway, Secrets. that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope we get this fucking memory soon. I mean, we will. Amelia will go into the trial. I'm assuming the next episode we will get em Amelia backstory pre-Frozen Bond. So this should be very good. So she couldn't accept what this woman was saying. All right. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. As I'm sure you could tell, a lot of Amelia and Subaru's actions stem from that one conversation they had. Yeah, It'll and it fucking cut it out. So I feel like that's the most condemning part about this. The Amelia heart pillow about Amelia can be independent and stuff like that. But we didn't get any of that. Instead, we see Subaru giving a heart pillow back to Amelia. It also gives more context to Amelia's mindset from this week's episode. All right. So it's not quite like ReZero to miss out on important scenes like that. But hmm. I'm sure it was just a one-time thing to get where they needed to be for the finale. Hmm, could it? Or are they falling off? No, I'm sure it's fine. That's the video though. Please go give Mr. Annie's a like on the channel. Check it out if you haven't. Here's the link. And I will see you next time.